My name is Suanna Harrison. I'm the owner of Oregon's Choice Gourmet, my family tuna business. My dad started Oregon's Choice almost 50 years ago as an individual fisherman selling his own catch off his boat, the fishing vessel Easy Sea off Port Dock 5 in Newport. Uh, my name is Herb Herbert Goblersch, and uh, I started Oregon's Choice uh, canning fish that I caught from my boat uh, as a commercial fisherman. You know, how many years later, and here we are, Suana is taking over and still continuing the business. You want me to fill this up? Yeah. yeah. I think taking over the business was kind of always my destiny. You know, it was ever since I can remember being like six years old, it was my job to help my dad and help him label tuna cans and call customers when he was coming in off the boat and things like that. I officially bought it from my parents in 2020, and then just this year we opened this shop, uh, The Tinned Fish. We just, I mean, it was easy to do a kind of handshake deal with my parents, you know, and, and take it over and take on all the risk and responsibility and all the day-to-day -day and customer service and all that stuff that they didn't want to keep doing in their, you know, 70s and 80s and beyond, so it worked out pretty well. So Anna has such fresh ideas. She has ideas I haven't even thought of yet, I would never think of. And I am impressed at what she has done with this little storefront. Going into real life brick and mortar after just being online only has definitely been a learning curve and it definitely isn't for the faint of heart. And I would not have opened a shop if I didn't have a successful business and website backing it up. <laughs> but it's been really fun and really rewarding. The bulk of my work is shipping packages all day. So I take the online orders from the website that have come in from the day before, and then I fulfill the order. So I'm packing boxes. Um, the new part with the store now is that I'm not alone when I'm doing that. So people are coming in, which is really fun. It's been nice to be more social. And you know, I just feel like there's so much potential and opportunity here to breathe some new life into what's like a pretty old business. And it's been really fun to have like regulars. So I have people that live in this neighborhood that are excited to have a healthy food option, you know, because I'm between Arby's and 7-Eleven. There's not a lot of good food in, on this part of 9th Street. A can of tuna on the grocery store shelves couldn't be more different than what we have at Oregon's Choice. So it's all Oregon albacore. So it's caught by local fishermen off the coast of Oregon and it's canned in Oregon too. It's an important distinction with Oregon albacore because they're much lower in mercury than fish caught overseas because the, the tuna that we're seeing here in Oregon are young. They're between two and five years old. So they're juvenile albacore swimming past on their annual migration. You know, typical a can of tuna at the grocery store, they're catching big old fish overseas with nets. These fish can be a hundred times higher in mercury. So not only is it better for you because it's lower mercury. It's also sustaining and supporting local fishermen, which are the lifeblood of our local fishing communities. Every fishing boat you see down at the docks in Newport is a small family business. There are so many businesses like mine, small family businesses doing really good artisanal, small batch, small scale, really interesting food. All the little small business, small artesian, businesses that she has here, one-of-a-kind things that she has. I don't know how she found them all. You know, even the local honey guy, you know, I have a local honey farmer. I carry his honey. It's local to Corvallis, which, you know, I feel like is important too, especially in the allergy capital of the world. Having that local pollen in your food, I mean, has to help. I kind of just have always enjoyed talking with customers and making people happy and finding my little community here has been really rewarding and much, much more fun than just shipping alone in a warehouse all day. The event is Early Happy Hour at the Tin Fish and it's a collaboration with Winter Water. This is one event of 22 events that we have going on for Winter Waters. We reached out to Suanna, who's the owner of the shop here, and said, hey, we want to celebrate local seafood. We want to celebrate women-owned businesses. Let's do some sort of fun collaboration pop-up.
since my um, store is brand new, uh, it's only been open a couple of months, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to get eyes on the shop and get people in the door and have samples and it'd just be fun to do. It's been really fun to gather up all these local businesses and have them all here today. I farm seaweed, which is the focus of the whole Winter Water series, so it really started as this celebration of seaweed and kind of a way to give seaweed a platform in the culinary world. I uh, actually use Oregon seaweed in my chili crisp. I, I hope they can really, you know, see that seaweed is a option for eating other than just, you know, nori or something or sushi. Like there's so many more applications that could be used for. Regular or Oh, I want spicy. Okay. I'm making onigiris using Oregon's choice Chinook salmon. Getting connected with so many people. That was the main reason I wanted to do this event, whether I sold nothing or I sold out. Just connecting with everyone today is really awesome. The seafood on the Oregon coast is some of the most sustainable fisheries in the world, and to eat local is going to be your best bet. I just get so excited around getting food from the ocean. There are so many sustainable kind of life-giving ways to do that, that get people out in nature and really connected with their, their landscapes and their coastlines. A lot of people in Oregon don't realize that we have kelp forests and that they're in peril. We've lost a lot of them in the last decade or so, especially trying to get word out in other in parts of Oregon other than just the coast. So getting the word out in Corvallis and Eugene and Portland so that all Oregonians know that um, we have these special ecosystems that we got to find better ways to take care of. I hope people just gain a bigger love and appreciation for our local food systems. Local businesses and the community, I mean, it's just part of what makes living in a place like this special. There's a really awesome community here in Corvallis and in the Pacific Northwest who are obsessed with local sustainable seafood and want to support each other. Be connected to your food. Know where it's coming from, know where it's being sourced from. It's one of the best things that you can do for your planet, for yourself for your community. When I was growing up, my dad wasn't around a lot. He would go fishing in the South Pacific and he'd be gone for nine months out of the year. I gotta say that uh, uh, I was missing all the holidays with my kids. Uh, all the important ones, uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. You know, all the fun holidays are, you know, I'm somewhere else. And uh, while I'm there, you know, I didn't have time to think about family. You know, I'm keeping the machinery running and wondering where the next fish is going to be. When he was around, I really valued our time together. And I was really invested in what he was doing. So he would take me down to the boat and, you know, I'd just get to play around in the docks and like he would just be doing maintenance stuff. And I just thought it was the funnest thing. So having the store has been a really fun way to breathe new life into it and make it more me and very like the history of the business and the history of my family. You know, the fish behind me are all fish my dad caught um, in the 60s. So the story behind your red salmon. Oh, I the sockeye. Those, I was working for Fish and Game, and I caught those in the Volcana River. In Alaska? <clears throat> yeah. And I found some oil paints and decided to mount a couple, I think. Yeah, those are good specimens. And what about these, the grayling? Oh, that's the biggest grayling I ever caught, 20 inches. Wow. You want to tell the story behind your record-breaking tuna, that uh, the <laughs> newspaper article? <laughs> That's the tuna from the can, too. Well, that was the Oregon record, biggest albacore caught in Oregon. Yeah, this one's 1991, uh -huh. August. This one was September 1991. That was a big press year for you. Yeah. <laughs> 1993 in New Zealand. That was my first troll of the sea biscuit. The first one. So you had the sea biscuit, the easy sea, and then the dolphin free. Yeah. Those three boats. Yeah, a lot of, you know, the legacy of a family business is there are so many things that I can't or shouldn't change. You know, I have to be very careful about changing the labels and the artwork. I certainly am not going to mess with the recipes or the product line. I can add things or, you know, maybe seasonally take things out. But there's a lot that 
shouldn't be changed just because it, it works and it's a good business and I don't want to come in and disrupt it and ruin, you know, the magic that's sustained it for almost 50 years. For the future, I think I really am enjoying exploring what the storefront is going to bring to the table. So I think having a lot of events and a lot of collaboration with other local businesses brings me a lot of joy, makes me really excited. And then further down the line, I really hope that my sons will want to take it over. I would love to see this be a third generation family owned business. I think, I believe, you know, it used to be that a Highliner was the guy who caught the most fish. And I think the modern Highliner is the guy who, who takes care of the resource so that there's always something there and takes better care of it for those, for those to come.